If you do win an award tonight, don't use it as a, a platform to make a political speech, right? You're in no position to lecture the public about anything. You know nothing about the real world. Nerderotic.com. Emmy ratings down double digits to record low. The Hollywood reckoning is here. The same one sports is going through for precisely the same reasons. People are fed up. Yes, it's that time of year again where adult pretenders pass out plastic awards for pretending, all while wearing $250,000 necklaces and $200,000 dresses. The only difference this time is they're doing it from the comfort of their own $6.5 million mansion. What a sacrifice. Emmy ratings flame out in early numbers with koof dominated ceremony. Sunday Night Football takes a hit as well. And yes, it turns out people get turned off by millionaire adult pretenders fanning the flames of division, rooting on the rioting and looting, and in some cases financing it. And the same goes for the millionaires who are really good at playing with their balls. We have a couple of articles to go over here. We also have Forbes, the 2020 Emmy TV ratings crashed, and so did its relevance. Well, it hasn't been relevant for a long time, but this is more evidence that Hollywood is heading down a road it might not be able to come back from along with sports. At the very least, a reckoning. At the very worst, an apocalypse. But before we get started, if you like what I do, please consider subscribing to the channel and liking and sharing the videos. It really does help, and I thank everyone who has subscribed. Thank you for your support. Now let's crap on Hollywood a little bit. Besides the obvious changes in format and technical reach due to the coof, Jimmy Kimmel's third time as host saw a lot of firsts for the 72nd annual Primetime Emmy Awards last night. Unfortunately, one of those firsts wasn't the double digits ratings loss. Now, I was curious to see how Jimmy Kimmel's return would go down after his summer canceling or his little vacation due to past comedic discrepancies and it was as awkward and cringe as expected. So I did enjoy a little bit of that, some schadenfreude, but the guy's a giant freaking hypocrite. It was an awful show. I did try to get through all of it. Uh, the politics were as bad. They were on the nose. But you got to realize these are adult pretenders. They're not very smart. We have a lot of dumb rich people in this country. And that's what's great about it. You'd think they would have a little gratitude. For one, there was a host again. Well, that's arguable at this point. After the TV Academy show ceremony tried to be like the 2019 Oscars and go without a front man or a front woman, well, they still went without a front man, and that's a microaggression. What about the 55 other genders? Then there was the unprecedented total sweep by Canadian comedy Schitt's Creek of every category it was nominated in. That sweep also saw a first for an import from the Great White North in a top series category. I didn't see that show. I can't say much about it, but I did see this one. Additionally, the big victories for HBO's Watchmen, Sunday's Emmys had record wins for African-American actors, which would be great if it was genuine, not that anything is in Hollywood, but we all know that that show won for its message. Now, I did watch it. It was terrible. It had one decent episode. The storytelling was bad. It was a Mary Sue fest filled with intersectional feminism and every other 2019 trope you could possibly think of, making it a giant virtue signal. So, of course, they were falling all over themselves to give this show awards. Yet, it doesn't have a season two. And speaking of HBO, the premium cablers upset in the lead actress in a drama series by Euphoria Zendaya made the Disney alum at 24 years old the youngest winner ever in the category. Well, she's probably a little too old for Hollywood considering what they have been defending over the last couple of weeks, but I am a little worried about her. Once again, the Emmys were facing off against Sunday Night Football just like last year, and here come the excuses. However, with the Emmys also matched up against the NBA playoffs for the first time with the Los Angeles Lakers beating the Denver Nuggets in a dramatic second game of the Western Conference, there was one particular similarity and one difference this year. Well, one of those similarities is sports is experienced double digits ratings losses as well as predicted by jimmy kimmel and yes he was trying to head this one off at the pass the emmys hit an all-time ratings low last night dropping 14 percent in viewers and 33 percent among adults 18 to 49 from the previous all-time low of last year and things are only going to get worse if they keep up this act which it looks like they're going to do broadcast on fox the 71st primetime emmy awards ended up with 6.9 million viewers and a 1.6 rating among the 18 to 49s that was a significant double digit drop from the 2018 emmys on nbc which aired on a monday
Looking at the last time ABC hosted the Emmys, last night's show was down 47% in viewership and 60% in the key demo from the early numbers of the 2016 ceremony. And those should be sobering numbers for Hollywood. Yet, Look at their act over the last six to seven months. They're not going to get a clue. Like I said, dumb, rich people. They'll find out when it's much too late. Look what's happening to sports. It's coming your way, Hollywood, if it isn't here already. NFL ratings, Monday Night Football, Week 1 doubleheader ratings crash. NBA first round ratings drop 27%, 40% since 2017 and 2018. And that was just last week for the NFL and the NBA. It's gone down more this week, pulling in 12.22 million viewers in the early metrics and 3.5 in the ratings. Last night's primetime big NFL game was down 17% in audience and 25% in the demo from early numbers from last week's Sunday Night Football official season debut. Marking Jimmy Kimmel's second time as Emmy host, the September 18, 2016 show, which was held on a Sunday and did face Sunday Night Football, ended up with the final numbers with an audience of 11.38 million and a demo rating of 2.8. Both lows at the time. It has been consistently going lower. And why do you think that is? Well, we have to go over to Forbes to get that answer. The 2020 Emmys TV ratings crashed, and so did its relevance. Now, Deadline didn't even bring this up in their article, so I have to credit Forbes for getting to this after they brought up the excuses of the NBA and the NFL, which again, also experienced double digits ratings losses for this reason as well. The political divisiveness problem, you don't say. The final key factor in audience decline is political. A 2017 study conducted among 800 people by the National Research Group discovered that 68% of Trump voters disliked political speeches at the Oscars. And I'm guessing a large percentage of centrists and a larger than you think percentage of people on the left. I know this because I do a lot of live streams on this channel. I talk to a lot of people and over and over again, I'm hearing people are just done with Hollywood. So much so that 66% of them have turned off the TV set because an actor gave a political speech at the podium. With the country split into nearly two equal fractions, award shows that include political statements from the hosts and winners alienate half of the potential audience. Where have we heard that one before? The recent Emmy Awards was no different, with overt and subtle scripted and unscripted comments about the current administration in Washington. While conveniently forgetting about all of the other politicians, oddly, research revealed that entertainers who deliver divisive political comments actually hurt their cause. Yet the Emmys and the Oscars appear to be happily trading their relevancy for their activism, a self-inflicted wound. Again, where have you heard this one before? Ah, hang on. This is the best part. Ironically, when you consider that viewership for the Emmy telecast has decreased significantly to only 5 million today, we need to wonder if a large chunk of those who still watch are employed by the industry. That appears to be true. A 2018 study by the Motion Picture Association of America estimated that the number of people economically supported by the U.S. film and television industry is approximately 2 million, 40% of the Emmy telecast, and that does not yet include their family, friends, and associates who watch in support. In other words, it is a circle jerk. They're just watching themselves. Unfortunately, award show viewership decline is probably irreversible. It is most definitely irreversible. We are on the brink of a possible Hollywood apocalypse, at the very least a reckoning, and maybe just maybe an entertainment apocalypse if you include sports, but exclude, of course, gaming, which is a juggernaut. In a very short time, the entire audience of award shows may consist primarily of those who work in the entertainment industry and their loved ones. The Emmy coordinator might as well rent a stadium, invite them all, and ditch the telecast 
all together. So as NBA, NFL, and Major League Baseball ratings continue to tank, the question has to be asked, are we at the beginnings of an irreversible decline in entertainment as a whole? Because the same is coming for Hollywood. It's going to go beyond awards shows ratings. Wait until those movie theaters open up. I believe the answer to that question is, is yes, you have alienated a lot of people permanently and they're not just on one side of the aisle. A lot of people are sick of this. Again, I hear about it every day, but it's just going to get worse. I give you an example, Pat Oswald from September 18th. I'm not gonna stick to comedy these next 46 days. Sorry, my answer was, won't be any different from the last 10 years, but thanks for warning us. And the problem is, that's gonna be most of Hollywood. And aside from Gina Carano, spreading that oh-so-controversial common sense. But Gina is an outlier. Unfortunately, I think Patton Oswald is the norm. And we're going to see more adult pretenders and sports ball players fanning the flames of division and rooting on the rioting and the looting. And that's the kind of thing that's going to stick in the head of the average Joe and average Jane. And they're not going to forget it in a year or five years or 10 years. You see, we've had a lot of time on our hands lately. Some of us have lost our jobs. Some of us have lost our businesses. Some of us have watched our businesses burn down. And we've all been watching your act over the last six or seven months, re-examining our relationship with entertainment. And while it's been fun, I used to like sports. I still like some entertainment, but it's less and less every day. You're making it very hard, Hollywood and BBC and the entertainment industry in general. So remember what you are, because you're not something we need, but you need us. If you like what you heard, please like, share, and subscribe. If you didn't like what you heard, I thank you for listening to this song. I'll see you in the next video. Nerderotic.com, please subscribe.